a lot of Canon and Sony users, especially when the camera has been released recently, are always complaining about overheating issues on those full frame mirrorless camera. For example, when Sony released the Sony a7 IV, that thing was overheating like crazy. And the Canon EOS R5, yeah, those stuff were stoves. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Siobhan Beckford and in this video I will be discussing my one year journey with using the Panasonic Lumix S5. Panasonic Lumix S5 was released back in 2020 but I got my device in 2021. August of 2021 to be exact. And in this video I will be explaining in brief my experience with using the unit so far. I'm Siobhan Beckford, stay tuned. So the Panasonic Lumix S5 is an L-mount full-frame camera offered by Panasonic. The S-series of cameras are their first full-frame mirrorless lineup of cameras. As we all know, Panasonic is a king within the mirrorless cameras space within the camera industry. They were one of the first companies to make a mirrorless camera. A good and powerful camera that rocked the 4K industry back in 2016 was the Panasonic Lumix G7. So the Panasonic Lumix S5 with 25 megapixel, sharp enough for amazing photos and also not too many pixels to create amazing low light videos. As we know the Sony a7S 3 has only 12 megapixels but this is okay for creating amazing videos unlike the Sony a7R which has a lot of megapixels to capture high resolution photos. So you see where I'm going with that. You can't have a perfect photographic camera that takes perfect videos. It doesn't exist. But 25 megapixel is that sweet spot right there, the optimal level that bridges the gap in capturing amazing photos and videos. Another reason why I love my Lumix S5 is the L mount on the camera. As such, it adapts all L mount lenses from Sigma, Leica and newly added to the Alliance DJI. So you can take any full frame L mount lens and mount it onto your L mount Panasonic Lumix S5 and vice versa. If you have a L mount camera, you can use the full frame Lumix L mount lenses on that camera. I love the ergonomics of this camera. I love how the buttons are positioned and the amount of buttons available. Most of the buttons available on the Panasonic Lumix S5 can be customized to whatever you want them to do. Such as my white balance button at the top, I don't change white balance as often to have a dedicated button for white balance. So I change the function of my white balance button to pop up my histogram. You can do other customizations as it relates to how you work, your workflow with the Panasonic Lumix S5 as the buttons are almost all customizable. The battery life on this camera is also amazing. Even though the battery for the Lumix S5 is smaller than the battery you would found in the S1, S1R or S1H, it gives me quite a number of shots per full charge. Panasonic has a rating of around 400 and something, I'll leave something here, 400 and something shots per battery, but there was an instance where I got 781 shots from one full battery charge. This is not something you should expect if you're going out shooting photos because I was continually turning the camera off and then on again when I'm ready to take photos. So you might not get the similar result that I get from my camera, based on your workflow. But the Lumix S5, even though the battery is smaller than the S1H, S1R and S1, it packs a punch because it doesn't have as much power hungry components as its bigger brother or sister. So we all know the image quality coming from the S5 is superb. So superb that the Panasonic Lumix S5 is comparable to the Sony A7S 3 the Sony A7 IV and the Canon EOS R5. That's how good the image quality is coming from the Panasonic Lumix S5 internally. Remember, this camera is the camera that is recording 4K 60 frames per second internally 
at 10 bit and you can get 6k from an external recorder such as the Atomos Ninja 5 and you can get Blackmagic RAW and ProRes if you add an external recorder such as the Blackmagic recorder or the Atomos Ninja 5. But let's let the cat out of the bag autofocus we all know panasonic doesn't have the best autofocus as it relates to mirrorless cameras but currently i'm using the human detection autofocus with my 85 millimeter lens on the panasonic lumix s5 and as you can see i'm pretty sure i'm probably in focus so it's doing a really good job for static videos like these and even if you're doing some motion movements it will still do pretty good it's not as good as sony and Canon but it's pretty good and usable compared to Panasonic cameras in the past. Panasonic by far has the best in-body image stabilization compared to any other mirrorless camera I've used. It's better than the Sony, Canon and even Nikon image stabilization that I've tested, A7S III, the Canon EOS R5 and all the other Rs. But the in-body image stabilization on the Lumix S5, I believe, in my opinion, is still below the GH5 and the Lumix GH6. But you have to take into consideration that the S5 is a full-frame camera, while the GH5 and GH6 are Micro Four Third sensors. So those are smaller and theoretically and practically easier to stabilize. So another fun and great reason why I chose Panasonic compared to Canon or Sony is the fact that they don't overheat and they have unlimited recording in 4K. A lot of Canon and Sony users, especially when the camera has been released recently, are always complaining about overheating issues on those full frame mirrorless camera for example when sony released the sony a7 IV, that thing was overheating like crazy and the canon eos r5 yeah those stuff were stoves panasonic lumix s5 doesn't have that problem even if i'm recording out in the sun on a hot summer day i don't have to worry about overheating and the camera shutting off and i have unlimited recording which is something panasonic added to their cameras from a very long time ago unlike some other brands <coughs> Canon. so one of the main reasons someone will take up a mirrorless camera in 2022 or even 2023 going into the future is the image quality now i'm going to show you guys some sample that i use this camera to capture and you can be the judge of how the image quality is coming from the panasonic lumix s5 and all these videos will be in 4K 10-bit color. So as it relates to 
photographic quality, I'm going to share some photo samples that I took using the Panasonic Lumix S5, both natural light and flash photography. I hope you guys like them. So I know the Panasonic Lumix S5 shoots in vlog flat profile but I don't really use vlog that often because it takes too long to color grade and edit vlog files and they are very large. My go-to image profile on the Lumix S5 is the portrait mode because it gives me rich color and gives me very little corrections to make in post and the video looks perfect coming directly from the camera when using portrait profile. I currently have two lenses with my Panasonic Lumix S5. I have the kit lens, 20 to 60 mm, and I have the 85 mm prime lens, which I'm using to record this video. I plan to add some lenses soon, but until then. So even though I'm giving a lot of good comments about this camera, there are a few things that I don't like about the Panasonic Lumix S5, but there are very few. One of them is the fact that this thing has a tiny HDMI port. I think it's the micro HDMI port, I think Panasonic could have at least added the mini HDMI port like what's on the S1H, but that's just for me, it probably works well for you. Another thing I don't like about the whole L-mount lens lineup of lens and cameras is the fact that these L-mount lens are so expensive, like the 50mm L-mount full frame f1.8 lens is around $400 to $500 and the Canon equivalent is like $250. So L-mount lenses are very expensive, but there's a workaround for this. You can always get an L-mount to EF EFS lens adapter and use your Canon lenses on a Panasonic Lumix S5. So that fixed that problem. So there are not many things to dislike about the Lumix S5. It's an amazing camera and it's the best camera for its price point within the environment. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you decide to purchase a Lumix S5 for the end of 2022 or going into 2023. I'm Siobhan Beckford. Check this video out about me unboxing the Lumix 85mm lens or this video on what you need to start your photography journey. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe.